We're going to go across the Hudson to the Rangers, who I can't believe were in the B block today. But the Rangers won their fourth straight after beating the Columbus Blue Jackets uh, and the Devils and the Montreal Canadiens this week. Right now, they're second in the NHL according to points, but they played more games than a lot of other teams. So, John, you asked this to Ray Ferraro, and we're going to get the P.K. Subban in a minute. That's a different story. But you asked this to Ray Ferraro. Are the Rangers as good as their record are? Or are they just kind of escaping losses right now? These last few games, Ray's right. They played better, and I've even said that on my good, bad, and uglies. Um, some of these other games have just been bad. Uh, I mean, the Seattle game, they escaped the loss. Uh, the, the, the previous Montreal game, I thought they sort of escaped the loss there too. The first period of last night's game was great. Arguably the best 20 minutes I've seen them play both ends of the rink. But af after that, the second period was, was bad. It was brutal. They, it, it, they were lucky to be leading after the second period. Yeah, their goal differential is zero, and, and, and that's just – it's not good. It's not its not good at all. You, you, I mean, that just goes to show you. Their bottom – I think they're third in high danger chances uh, four. Third last, I'm sorry, in high danger chances four. And they're fourth worst in high danger chances against. So they're not getting enough – chances and they're still somehow converting I, I i really don't understand that but i i, I don't see that as sustainable and then they're giving up a ton of high danger chances and ray also said that and, and you gotta you gotta make sure that you're limiting the chances for and against and secondary scoring has been a problem but i mean the last couple of games capo caco has got two in two games he's got three points in these last two games he's played great defensively Alexi Lafreniere got a goal. Julian Gauthier had a great goal. Last that was week. a great goal. Really was. And that that's that's the type of goal that he needed. A hard work, high skill play to go in and finally go his way. You saw the look on his face when he scored. But, I mean, again, a lot of the comments here. I mean, I saw Brody's. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I see Lou's here. Um, the teams go through the neutral zone with ease and lose right about that. But you know what? Um, listen, I'm not going to tell anybody to not be happy about these wins, but be cognizant that there are some major issues that need to be fixed. Um, I, I, I'm, I was actually with you on this, Michael, that I thought that Miller needed to be sent down. Um, but, I mean, the last few games, he's actually played well. He's played better. Um, Jacob Truba hasn't been as bad. Patrick Nemeth still needs to be fired into the sun via a cannon, but um, that's not saying a lot because, again, the only skater that's really worse in the NHL right now than Patrick Nemeth is Zidane Chara, maybe even Andy Green, but I think I'd rather have Andy Green than Patrick Nemeth at this point. So I'd rather have a cone than Patrick Nemeth. Yeah, I, I would rather really have a traffic cone. Uh, while, while we're on the Patrick Nemeth, he almost killed Igor Sesterkin Saturday night in Columbus. What is? What are you? What are you doing? doing shoving Stop. him into the goalie? Stop! Stop <laughs> doing this! Hasn't anybody learned from what Charlie McAvoy did to Philip Hedo a couple of years ago when he sent him into Tuka Rask after he scored that goal? No, they, they no, they're 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 never going to learn that lesson. They're just going to think hit the guy, not not where you're hitting him. Because by the way, as a forward in that situation, as soon as I feel the resistance on my back, I'm just letting gravity take over, which is exactly what I forgot who the Columbus forward did it. But he 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 was like he got launched into the sun, and the sun was Igor Sesterkin. You can't do that. You really can't do that. There are, and like I said, Chris Kreider, I know the president of the fan club just wants to give him that nice pat on the back. Go, go ahead, Barry Horowitz. Do it. <laughs> all yeah, right. Well, about the Barry Horowitz reference for all you wrestling fans. All right. <laughs> well, you know what? Um, we're going to save the Chris Kreider for about two minutes from now. First, me and Anthony are just going to give our thoughts. And then we still got to cover the controversy with PK. But right now, they're still lacking a little bit of chemistry. You got it with Kreider and Zibanejad. You got it with um, Panarin and Strom. You have it with Fox and Lindgren. 
You still really don't have it between Miller and Truba, even though they're the second best defensive pairing. It's definitely not there with Lundqvist and Nemeth. By the way, they're both Swedish, so I'm surprised that that's not working. <laughs> so um, then you have the third unit, which actually looks pretty good. Lafreniere, uh, Heedle, and Gauthier. So now you still have that spot that's on the top line that you need to fill especially if you move Barkley Goudreau down. But right now, Goudreau's there. That's what it is, what it is. Kaka looks like he's starting to come alive and get some confidence. Um, and and the fourth line is just right now, the fourth, the fourth line has been their, arguably their second best line. It's a little bit arguably, but yes, still. Um, Consistency-wise, they've been the most consistent one, I would say. Right. So that's where it's – they need to they need to be more consistent um, as a team – and they won the shots on goal, I think, the last two games. They didn't do it uh, the game before. But, you know, just keep the high-danger chances to the outside. They did it very well versus Vancouver. They did it versus, um, for the most part, in Edmonton for about 40 minutes. And then the last 20 minutes, they were getting hammered. So, Anthony, your thoughts before we go on to uh, PK? You know, there's, there's, there's no arguing with the record. Um, they're banking the early points, but what John says, there are, there are stuff that they have to clean up. Um, you know, I, I, I think, I think at this point they, they've proved obviously that they, that they have skill. Um, it's just te- usually it's not always the case, but usually when there's a team that has a good record, but you know, the goal differential, you know, maybe says otherwise, or usually catches up to you over the course of a full, over the course of a full season. Um, it, it, you know, it's rare when, when it doesn't, but listen, you know, the Rangers have an elite defenseman, Adam Fox, um, you know, Chris Kreider scoring goals for him. Um, even though Panarin hasn't been like electrifying, he, you know, his, his, his PPG is still good. Um, so they, they have a lot of pieces in place that are working for him. Um, you know, Kako's looked a little better, so that's, so that's good. But I would say my biggest critique though is still is, you know him and Lafreniere. Obviously, um, you you you're you're left wanting more from them. Um, but you know overall, listen, they're they're in, you know what first place in, in the Metro Division. Um, you know we'll we'll see if some things balance out over the course of the season. But um, I mean at, at this point, I think you could say there's there's no reason why you you could say that they won't make the playoffs. I, I think they would definitely be a playoff team. Um, but you know, other other teams are also gonna are also gonna pick it up. You know, some teams maybe like Columbus will, will drop back in New Jersey. Um, I, I think New Jersey, while better than last year, I, I still think they're ultimately gonna fall a little, little bit. More on the Devils um, in a minute. Yeah, and then you have and then you have teams like the Islanders. Obviously, they haven't even played a home game yet, for Christ's sake. So, um, th- you know, they're going to get better. Um, so it's a long season. The Metro Division, the Metropolitan Division, is is, is absolutely ridiculous. Um, but I think there's no doubting the Rangers are a good team. They are. Um, it's just going to be a matter of are they are they going to keep playing as what their record shows, or will they regress a little bit, you know, to the mean of some of these underlying issues they have to clean up? Yeah. And uh, Phil, I, I'll I'll just make a quick reference here because I was looking at something that Hockey uh, Stat Miner was uh, posting. He posted a couple of things. The first thing that I was looking at was. Through November 12th, the Rangers were 31st out of 32 in um, shooting percentage for uh, an expected goals for. And then they were last in um, scoring chances for and high danger chances for. And then since that, since November 12th, they're seventh in shooting percentage for. And then uh, 11th in expected goals for. 15th in scoring chances for percentage and then uh, 13th in high danger chances. So they, they did improve on those two things. The other ones, um, the other one was something that they posted uh, last night uh, t- at 10, three and three, they've earned 23 points in their front opening 16 games uh, teams that earn 20 greater than 22 or more points. And their first 16 games have made the playoffs 91% of the time in the salary cap era, excluding the shortened seasons. So those those are some pretty good numbers for positivity for Ranger fans. Well, also, like they say, you know, th- American Thanksgiving is sort of the line where you just say those teams are making the playoffs and yep. then that's it. 
So that's why uh, the man whose team is down in the lower box really needs to pick it up. And I would say you might be an Islander fan, but now you're an Islander pundit. So you just got to. So it's a little bit of both. You're covering the team, too, now. So it's not just that. But uh, we got to move on to this. And uh, trigger warning for anybody that might want to break their TV when they see this. So we were talking about it with Ray Ferraro, and I wasn't trying to say him by name, but P.K. Subban, either way you want to say it, because uh, we all know that there's uh, Paul Bissonnette who said that's not a slew foot. It basically is the same freaking thing anyway. To do that where you're doing that at that point of the ice, you're basically trying to end the guy's season. Is there any other... And I, at first, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't kill PK on this. Sunday night, I saw it. I went, I think he's turning. I looked at that again, and you do see his foot come out. Here's the so. problem: what, other than a remedial level skater who really doesn't know how to stop, who the hell swings their foot when they're trying to stop like that? Ooh. Who? Like, and, and if you watch it again. His his left leg is what he leads in with it, and then he swings his right run around, and that's what connects with Blaze's foot. Like, I mean, I understand that people have made fun of his training videos where he does the agility drills and he does the the mohawks and the and the side to side skating and stuff like that. You can't go posting all these videos. And, and do all these drills and tell me that you're an inept skater. Either you, either this is something that you're you're aware of and you don't do it. So, I, I mean, you don't make an effort to stop it. So you're complicit or you're just a straight up dirtbag. And either way, it's bad. Anthony, uh, you had this topic in our in our chat a couple weeks ago on Bar Talk. Go. Um. You know, I, I remember I go back to when he did that to Reeves in the preseason. I, I, I you know, I, I remember saying like, oh, you know, he was concerned for him after it happened and it looked like it was a complete accident. But then like the next couple of times he did it, um, you know, he did it to Zegris. He did it to Lucic. Um, so uh, it's it's just when, when it happens that many times, then you have to say to yourself, OK, well, clearly it's on purpose. And. You know, you know, it's not it's not a good look for him, um, you know, because it's it's a dangerous play um, and also puts a target on his back. Eventually, someone's going to someone's going to go after him. It's only a matter of time. Um, but the unfortunate part about it is like P.K. Subban, the person, you know, like he's great. He's a great personality in the media. He's you know, I mean, we've seen what he did in Montreal. Don't know what ten million dollars to a children's, children's hospital, hospital, to a children's yeah. hospital 20. in Montreal. Yeah, I think it was even twenty. He he had, he had the blue line buddies thing in, in Nashville. Um, so clearly he's a he's a good, kind hearted person. Like you would you wouldn't think he want you you know it just doesn't make it doesn't add up. How do you do that? And so, and again, by the way, go, going even further, that's what's even more frustrating with this. That's well, yeah. I was about to say that myself. Like and, this and isn't Tom mind Wilson this. that that that's going around and doing. <laughs> the penalty yeah. box like a freaking jackass after he tries to end someone's life by slamming his head into the ice. Like, you like know? PK, when he is done, is going to glide into a broadcast studio and be sensational. And I, I don't mean to even say that without hyperbole. He's already done some of it. Yeah, he's he did an NHL late, late night show. So I mean, and then you're, you, but you're you're seeing him and you're going, dude. What are you doing? It's just it, like, and and you think about other videos that he's got, like when he was the bus driver as an old man, and then turn around to the kids and going, "Oh, I guess I'll play with you." And the kids are jumping up and down as he's starting to take off the makeup, going, "It's Subin! It's Subin! I knew it was Subin!" I mean, uh, he's gonna be great. It's just leave this shit out. Don't seems, do this. It seems like it's a it's like a bad habit that developed in his game, and he kind of just like subconsciously does it now. I mean, I because I, I don't understand why he why he keep doing it. Because right now the Rangers and the right now the Rangers have to try to replace Sammy Blay, who, like it or not, guys, was one of the key parts of their offseason because they traded Pavel Buchnevich for him. 
And also during that game, I had to see some of the I Rangers. Twitter worried plays. about that. Yeah. But, 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 uh, Sammy Blay played very well for them. Yeah. He, he'd been better than anyone could have expected. And listen, he shouldn't have been on the first line. That's the other part of the offseason. Mm. But you're right. Now you yeah. have to replace him. Do you call up Laurie Pioneemi? Do you go get Phil Kessel? Do you see if Dallas starts to fall out of it and call them about Alex Radulov? Do you like, hope that everything stays the same up until March when you could probably get crowds off over here? <laughs> it's there's or so that, many questions. Or that. I mean, I don't know if the Rangers really want to go spend assets on players like Kessel or Radulov. Or do do they go and make the big splash and go get Philip Forsberg? I don't know if they can do that and, and realistically bring him back with the, the the contracts that they have that they have to give out and then Adam Fox's extension going they, in. Like, they they wouldn't be they wouldn't be able to. I yeah, I don't think they yeah. would. But if you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.